Welcome to the Toka Backstage Podcast. Join Toka's Executive Director, Chris Wolf, in conversations with the artists and people behind the scenes of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation's performances and events. Hi, this is Chris Wolf, the Executive Director of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Toka Backstage. Um, this time, I'm actually talking with Chris Jacobson from Good Stuff Coffee. Now, I know you're wondering, what the heck does coffee have to do with the arts? Well, it just so happens that Good Stuff Coffee is partnering with Toka to um, help us raise a little funds during these crazy times. And actually, who knows, it may go on forever. But uh, for every uh, coffee purchase, you, we, Toka will get 20% of, of your order. And um, just for the record, they did send me a sample. It is good coffee. I wouldn't lie to you. If you like coffee, check it out. Um, in the meantime, listen to this to this podcast because it's they're doing something really creative, which is not only helping nonprofits like Toka, but they're also helping um, uh, foster youth who are aging out of uh, foster care, which is um, which is important. They're doing good work. So uh, take a listen. Uh, try their coffee. Um, I actually have some right here. It is delicious. Uh, so uh, take a listen and enjoy. Thanks for joining us again. This is Chris Wolf, the Executive Director of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation, and it's my honor to have Chris Jacobson with me today to talk about all things coffee. Now, before people freak out and wonder why the heck is an arts organization talking about coffee, let me first point out the fact that I cannot tell you how much coffee our artists drink backstage uh, and at the, our patrons in concession, but you have a very unique coffee company um, that is actually going to benefit the arts. So first of all, thank you for taking the time to join us. I appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Chris. And so tell me about uh, Good Stuff Coffee. Where in the world did you come up with the idea of a coffee company? Well, what's interesting is uh, I'm a business process improvement and management consultant. And uh, about six years ago, I really didn't know anything at all about coffee. Uh, and I also didn't know anything about the plight of former foster youth. And I happened to take an engagement um, with a group that was trying to use coffee to help former foster youth, which is what we do now. Our mission is helping young men and women once they've aged out of foster care to become permanently self-sustaining. And coffee is how we do it because it's a recurring uh, consumable product. So uh, I really learned everything uh, about both uh, topics at this, uh, at this consulting engagement. And I, I just, uh, I, God kind of gave me a heart for these kids, these young people that were struggling because it's an awful statistic that uh, half of these kids, once they've aged out, uh, within two years of aging out, end up either in jail or on the streets. And it just, uh, it just broke my heart. And, uh, and then I learned about coffee and the coffee business is really kind of a fun business. It's much like wine or, or beer or cigars or anything like that, where you can develop a taste for it. And, um, so, so that's what really got me uh, triggered to, 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 get moving. And so I started doing some stuff dabbling online after that engagement was over. And uh, I thought, you know, well, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I can make sure that this is profitable and we can, we can have profit to, to pay for the services and pay for uh, the salary for the, the, the young men and women. And the, the big thing that I learned, uh, which I was totally unaware of, uh, is that there are lots of, there are lots of groups that will help uh, these kids when they age out with mentoring and with, um, you know, housing even and things like that. But where they really fall down, everything falls down is they need a living wage. They need to be able to make a living uh, here in Southern California, which is not, not inexpensive. And, and they need reliable transportation so that they can get to and from work. And then we also want them to be able to use that reliable transportation to go to school, to and from school so that they can uh, study and become whatever they're really passionate about doing this is kind of a tra transitional thing to just get them back on their feet. Well, I, and I think, I think you and I share that, that same feeling. I mean, I, there's a, actually a, in Orange uh, Fullerton in Orange County, there's a, a, 
a restaurant called Monkey Business Cafe, and they yeah. do a lot of that as well, working with foster youth. And I, I, I don't know. I just think about because I mean I grew up in in a fair, somewhat stable household, um, but it's like I had the opportunities of having parents and and guidance. But these kids. I don't know. I, just, I like you feel for them and, and, and would love to help them as well. I always thought, well, it'd be great to put together a, a band or a, a group of, of, you know, performers of former uh, foster youth or aged out kids. I just don't know how to get a hold of them. So if you ever hear kids that want to perform, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll put them on stage. But um, uh, in Florence, there is a group, uh, uh, Fostering Hope LA. Dot org wonderful organization that works with the kids and then you know maybe you can uh, have them come out and usher for some programs at least or something like that sure um, and then uh, besides helping the foster youth you also um, I mean part of the reason why we're now involved uh, Toka is involved is because we will be um, selling your coffee on our website and through our social media uh, and in exchange we get a percentage what what was the uh, the thought process behind partnering with nonprofits? Well, what we realized is uh, in order to uh, get our sales channels uh, to maximize the sales, we wanted to be in multiple channels simultaneously. And um, one of the what what I thought would be the lowest hanging fruit would be um, nonprofits and. Uh, um, uh, school PTOs and PTAs, any group trying to raise money. Um, I just remember my wife and I were very involved in, uh, in our kids' uh, lives growing up and we were always doing fundraising for something. And you know, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd be asked to buy uh, wrapping paper, you'd be asked to buy candy, you'd be asked to buy whatever. And it, it was just this ongoing thing of something new, something new, what's the next thing? And so we thought, you know, I thought, um, well, coffee's consumable. We can get people to subscribe to it. We can create a guaranteed, predictable, recurring revenue stream by just building a base of users, a, a base of subscribers, uh, and then gradually add to that. So uh, in doing that, I, I came up with a structure where everybody wins, everybody makes some money. The, the groups like uh, Toka are, are just, all you do is, is you tell your uh, supporters, hey, we have this available as a fundraiser. It is year round, ongoing, never ending. It's not, it, and we're not gonna then go back and ask you to buy a wrapping paper next month because you're buying the coffee, right? So you just send them to goodstuffcoffee.com. I think it's, uh, I think we just put the site up, goodstuffcoffee.com slash toka, I believe. Yeah. And anybody that buys the coffee there, we do all the work. Uh, and, and we just write you a check for 20% and we give you a full accounting. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible, no risk. Uh, so if you don't sell anything, it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't harm you in any way. If you sell something, if people buy the coffee, uh, you start making money and you just gradually ramp that up over time. You can be making several hundred, several thousand dollars a month uh, from coffee commissions. And I will say that you were kind enough to send me a sample and it, it is very good. So people who are thinking, well, yeah, coffee online, it, could it be any good? It is good. Thank you very much. It's delicious. Um, it, but you brought up a point that I was, I was thinking about earlier is, is I have to imagine why our coffee is like you said, a lot like wine and beer. It's like people, uh, Wine just blows my mind because there's like so many varietals, so many different tastes and people say, oh, well, I don't have a palate for this or I don't, you know, but coffee has got to be kind of similar because there's like so many different types of coffee. How does somebody choose what, what kind of coffee to order? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, what we've done is most people that we've encountered um, are not coffee connoisseurs. I, I am not a coffee connoisseur. As a matter of fact, I have a very limited uh, palate. Uh, you know, when, when somebody says, hey, what are the notes of this particular blend or single origin coffee? Uh, I have a hard time tasting them. You know, I'm not a coffee expert. I'm not a coffee guy in the coffee business. I'm not a nonprofit guy in the coffee business trying to help uh, former foster youth. I'm a businessman. Uh, I know how to make a profit so that there's money to 
money available to help the former foster youth. So um, most most people I think are like like us that 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 enjoy coffee. We know what kind we like. We know what kind we don't like, but, but we may not be able to put a, a, a name to it. And that's okay. You know, it's, it's what do you like? And uh, so we, we decided we wanted to keep the business simple, remove as much complexity as we possibly could. So I, I call it like the, the in and out burger, you know, fast food menu. We very much simplified it. You get burgers, fries, you know, a soda or shake, that's it. You've got your four basic options. And within that, there's enough complexity already with all the different variations for the way you can serve those products. So the same is true with coffee. So we tried to reduce the complexity. So we have Roaster's Choice regular, Roaster's Choice decaf. And I have, a, I have an amazing roaster. Our coffee here is, is it's roasted locally. It's organic. It's air roasted, which takes away almost all the acidity and bitterness. And, and we're happy, by the way, to come and do demos when, when uh, allowed after the COVID uh, stuff uh, goes away. Uh, we'll come and serve coffee. We'll donate coffee, serve coffee at events uh, because we want people to try it. Because once they try it, they really are hooked. It's amazing. Only 1% of the coffee on the planet is air roasted. It's, it's that smooth and delicious. So um, you, you've got variations, you can get it whole bean, you get it ground, and then there are different grind types. So again, we've just, we do offer regular decaf, we offer an espresso. And then if somebody is very discerning in their uh, palate and they want a specific, we can get an Ethiopian Yirgacheff, we can get a Sumatran, we can get a blend, we can customize that. We have a custom option, we charge a little bit more because it's non-standard, it makes us go off of our normal uh, workflow. Uh, but we'll we'll make that available and 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 that way everybody's happy and we've simplified and reduced the complexity of the uh, of the business. That's cool that that you that you have that option and and I will say that's one thing I did notice about the coffee is like I, I I'm like you know the average coffee consumer if if I want a cup of coffee I'll stop at um, the place on the corner with the green <laughs> symbol but it. For, and my wife will comment that it, it tastes like it's burnt or bitter, you know, and it's this, the, your coffee doesn't have that at all. There's no bitterness to it. It's, it's really smooth, which I, I really did like, I mean, it's, it's definitely. You, you uh, notice it right away, don't you? You do. There's actually a, a pleasant taste to it. It's not like, okay, I need this just to stay awake or wake up in the morning. It's like, this is that, this actually the tastes good. process. The air roasting process really, really makes that happen. And you say it's processed locally. Is it, is it LA, Orange County? Uh, Central Orange County. <clears throat> and I should say, by the way, we, we, uh, we have another option. We have two roasters, one, one for our bagged coffee, whole bean ground coffee. And then you see this other uh, white uh, carton to my left here. Uh, we do K-cups uh, for the Keurig machines just because so many uh, homes have those for convenience and uh, businesses, lots of businesses have them. So uh, we have a different roaster. Our roaster uh, out of Anaheim area, um, he has probably 40 or 50 different uh, roasts or flavors. Again, we simplified it. We picked five uh, that we think will, will appeal to most people. Uh, we have a, a dark roast, French roast. We have a medium roast, Colombian. And we have two light roasts that are flavored hazelnut cream and vanilla bean. And then we have a decaf French roast. So again, super simple, take out the complexity. And we, and again, we can customize that if people want to get into that. And this is also something else I was thinking about today. How, how, how does it, for flavored coffee, how do you, how does the roaster infuse the flavor in the, in the bean? Um, let me clarify too. That's a great question because uh, it's not sweetened. It is, uh, but but what they do is they'll grind it and then they have a big vat like a tumbler where they'll add the essence of the vanilla, you know, bean extract or the uh, uh, hazelnut, um, and so then that's all tumbled together into the coffee grounds uh, so that when it's filled into the K cup, um, that that it all uh, brews together. And you say it's not sweetened, so it's not like sugary and like those syrups? No, no. 
So I might yeah. actually try that. I don't like flavored coffee, just usually because it's always like the creamer and the, the syrups and stuff. It's always so sweet. So I'll, yeah, I'm you have to get to balance that ratio that you like, right? And if somebody else pre-mixes it, it's not going to appeal to everybody. Right, exactly. I'll to, hmm. Okay, uh, looks like I have to place an order now. Um, <laughs> so uh, what, what is the plan for, for good stuff? I mean, what, do, what is your hope in the future to, to move on to? I mean, what, it's, it sounds like you have lofty goals. Uh, yes, indeed. You know, uh, if you if you have a big goal, you might just hit that target. If you have a small goal, you only hit the small target. So, so always we always dream as big as we possibly can. And uh, so, so what I what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I created a model that was always profitable. So it doesn't matter what size uh, Good Stuff Coffee is, we are always profitable because we get orders. We get paid a retail rate. We buy weekly from our, our roasters and we pay our wholesale rate and we make our margin. And that's how we're able to operate. And then what we do is we just scale it and we add hours. And then when we get to a certain point, I, I forgot to mention, when we get to a certain point, uh, our, our uh, model is that we actually lease a car for our former foster youth and pay their auto insurance. And that's that final missing piece of the puzzle for them. We pay them $15 an hour as a wage. So it's a living wage, they can afford to live here, and then they have a vehicle that gets them to and from. So I built the model here, I scaled it, I made sure that uh, you know our, our brand uh, is recognized as a premium brand. It's high quality coffee. We're not, we're not trying to help people with crummy coffee. We want do we want to do good things with good stuff it has to be good stuff that's why it's the good stuff good stuff coffee but um uh then what we want to do is we want to um expand that and just replicate that model so so this is this has been proven you know attention to detail premium quality uh now we've got that all documented like i said i'm a business process process management process improvement consultant so i've got the process dialed in uh, we do local delivery, we do shipping. I've got all the costs dialed in to the best, highest profit margins possible without skimping on, on quality and, and customer service. And now uh, what you're experiencing actually out there in Torrance is we're duplicating this exact model in the South Bay. And so uh, I have uh, currently, uh, Kimberly is your area representative. Uh, and it's basically like a pseudo franchise model. It's not a franchise. We handle all the contracting, we handle the websites, we handle um, uh, all the money issues. Uh, and, and everybody, nobody, nobody that works with us has any risk. They don't have to worry about having skin in the game. They sell stuff, they make money. It's not, a, by the way, it's not a, a, a multi-level thing at all. There's only one level. There's an area rep and the kids, that's it. Uh, so every there, we're not filtering money and uh, you know off on the sides. So then we we duplicate this model in in multiple areas, and we've got uh, a new one coming online in Colorado Springs. I just met with a local roaster that might become our local roaster in Northeast Phoenix. We have Southeast Phoenix and Oklahoma City. My goal in the next year. Uh, so there's a gentleman here, Tahari Jackson, who is being groomed to take over uh, all of the production for all of Orange County. He's going to be set up to be in business for himself. He's not an employee of Good Stuff Coffee. He's Hari Productions. Hari Productions. I've got a, um, an office that we're uh, coordinating to get him a warehouse space. Uh, and, and that's going to be his production facility. He's going to manage his business. Uh, we're going to contract with his business to be our fulfillment of all our coffee in Orange County, and he's going to run it. And, and that's, that's the model. And now, uh, um, once we get over that uh, hurdle, we're, oh, I, I know where I was going with that. I apologize. We use local coffee roasters in each area. So uh, that allows us to do uh, three things, local, local, local. We're local, we, we buy coffee locally, which keeps money in the local economy. We help a local former foster youth with it. And we use a local delivery in, instead of uh, charging shipping and shipping everything from Orange County all over the country. We wanna start using local coffee roasters in each area so that we can charge a $4 local delivery fee. It saves money for our users and it, may, and, and it allows more money to be in our program to spend on the kids. 
Well, that makes sense. So that rather than rather than somebody from you know Nashville getting their coffee sent from Southern California, there's somebody directly there that handles that that whole process, which makes yeah. sense. I, and I kind of I kind of liken this to the you know every now and again restaurants will say, hey, if you have everyone come eat on this day, we'll give ten percent of the bill to whatever nonprofit. This is kind of the same thing where it's kind of like you buy coffee and we get a kickback on it, which is. Yep, except it's not just one day and then, you know, from this time to this time, it's all time. Yeah, which is nice because I, I don't, I mean, just about everyone I know, I mean, there's few and far between. Everybody needs their coffee in the morning. And if you're going to wake up, you might as well have good coffee. <laughs> and support Tokyo while you're drinking your coffee and support former foster youth. Keeping exactly. them out, out off the streets and out of jail. Um, so, was it, did you have any any um, connection with former foster youth before this the that meeting that you had? N none at all. So it, it's really you know God kind of uh, put it on my heart by by getting me first of all into that engagement and and then I had to work with these young people daily and and I you know they've got some rough edges and they've got some you know. They need a little bit more grace and uh, patience than, than you know, because they, they haven't had the, uh, the upbringing. I, I mean, I, I look at my own kids. I have two kids that are now 23, 24, uh, both graduated. Well, my son's almost done with his MBA. And, and they've had every advantage, okay? If I had kicked them out the door at age 18, they would have struggled mightily. And, and, and they had every advantage. These other young people that are coming out of foster care, they've been bounced around to six or seven, eight homes over the course of their young life, you know, and, and they're, they don't have that, uh, that foundational sense of, you know, um, support. Um, so so they, they just need a little, they're sharp. Most of these kids are sharp. They want to learn. They want to work. Uh, they just need a little extra help, you know. Tahari might get a little sloppy with the labels, and I got to say, you know, hey, um, we got to make sure we have a premium brand here that we're, we have to represent our brand properly. So he's learning, uh, and he does. He, he's growing. Uh, but I, I have to, you know, maybe go back and repeat myself more than I would with a standard guy that, that I would employ. Uh, and I'm, you know, if, if, a, if a regular employee maybe failed to do some things as, as many times as he did, they might not last with me as long. But, uh, you know, Tahari's getting a special uh, dispensation of extra grace because he wants it. He wants it. As long as he's working toward the goal, I'm not going to abandon him. I'm going to keep helping him work toward that goal. And he's going to succeed because he wants it. Well, and sometimes I think street smarts are underrated. I mean, book smart is good, but street smarts can't beat it, man. <laughs> we we can definitely learn from them too. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, I, I it is our hope at some point when when all this craziness is over that we uh, can also start serving your coffee um, at our concessions and definitely for our for our artists because, like I said. God knows how much coffee we actually go through uh, for a show. Um, and uh, so we're going to urge people on our end to go to our website, to click on, to go to your website and order some coffee to help support former foster youth and uh, the arts. Um, Chris, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for all that you do. It's, it's, uh, it's honorable work and, and uh, you're one of a kind. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. And I, I do want to make sure that people know to, if you're going to go buy the coffee, make sure you buy it from the Toka site because that's how Toka gets paid. Please make sure you go. Don't just buy it from our main site. Go to goodstuffcoffee.com slash Toka and make sure you make your purchases there, please. Yeah, and we'll put, we'll put it on our homepage so people can go, go directly there. Um, and it is good coffee, folks. So you don't, it's, you, know, you don't have to worry about getting Folgers. This is, this is good <laughs> stuff. And I really am impressed with the air, uh, the air roasting, because I think that sort of helps sort of soothe, soothe it. I mean, it makes a real smooth taste. Right. Yeah, I, I got, I was sold on it. That, that's what they did in that engagement where I was learning coffee and, and I was sold on it immediately. Great. Well, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Chris.